your Tor, uh, your, your normal usage of your shell server, your, your web server. I use that. I've been using it for a few months uh, on, a rel on a pretty fast Tor node, and it's been pretty good. Um, I've, I've, have not, I've not even felt, even over SSH connection, not even felt an additional lag from the Tor server. So that's a pretty, pretty, pretty good way to, to run a Tor node and not have it really affect anything that you're doing. Uh, also, getting on the ground and just trying to convince uh, application developers, particularly in the open source community where they may be more uh, willing to listen to, to stripping out unique identifiers if you don't want them, um, raising awareness that privacy uh, issues should be considered uh, as part of regular security measures and uh, vulnerabilities, and as regular vulnerabilities. So pretty much concludes things. Any, any questions for... Uh, We've covered a. I could put up. I'll show up some of these diagrams. So there's the attack point. If anybody has any questions on attacks or possible defenses. Yeah. Um. So. There were, I think, three to four uh, SSH spoofing nodes. There was, one, there was a couple, two different flare-ups of those. Um, they can't, they seemed to come in pairs. Uh, like a couple of nodes would show up that were screwing with SSH keys, and then they went away for a while, and then they showed up again with similar contact info um, a, a few months later, uh, modifying. Uh, application level traffic, like I said, the, the antivirus, the, the pop-up blocker code seems to be pretty prevalent. I would say there's about 10, uh, 10 to maybe 20 nodes that are running some form of pop-up blocker. Job, they actually inject JavaScript into your page to hook the window open uh, Java, JavaScript call and try and block pop-ups for you. Pop -ups for you. There's only one that was blocking the Google Analytics that, that I found. Um, the only one, there was only one node that we found doing the SSL, uh, other than the, the SSH, the SSH man in the middle nodes were also doing SSL man in the middle, but the SSH, the Chinese ISP was only affecting one, uh, Chinese exit node. There's a fair amount of content, uh, uh, random connections being closed, streams being closed, uh, especially with nodes that go through China, um, uh, possibly due to the Great Firewall. There are a few exit nodes in, in China that, that will randomly close uh, connections on you if, if you're looking at particular websites. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. I think that, that, that pretty much is pretty much the, the, the large share then. Yeah? Yeah, so when, when these nodes are discovered, there's a in Tor, for Tor clients uh, greater than 012X, uh, there is a bad exit flag that it gets slapped on these things when we find them. And then for all the Tor clients more recent than those ver that version, the, they will obey that and not use that node as an, e as an exit. Uh, we all, I don't know, do we still mark them as invalid as well for the, for the older ones? I think there's also an in, uh, we can take away the valid flag, which means that, that they won't, that these nodes won't be used essentially for, for routing at all. Are they used as middle nodes in that case then? If they're invalid, so then, then they wouldn't be used for guard and exit nodes when we take away that, that valid flag for the older Tor clients out there to protect them as well. So there are two mechanisms in place to, to protect, uh, to list these nodes. Um, obviously, you, you know, you just, uh, if the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're just, they're just dropped. Yeah. Um, none that none that is visibly occurring. That that seemed to be. I mean, most of the Chinese exit nodes aren't spoofing SSL. That seemed to be a a, a freak occurrence. Um, 
Yeah, we haven't seen any any visible uh, government attacks. Uh, as Roger pointed out to me in the conversation, it's likely that any government that actually wants to attack Tor is probably going to do it from a, from you know a, a traffic analysis point of view, uh, getting high up on the uh, on, on some core routers uh, and watching doing sampling tra attacks and, and those such things. Yeah. Oh, don't. Uh, well, you can you can specify your exit policy for is the is the biggest step you can take. You can say, oh, okay, I'm not, I'm just not going to be an, either not going to be an exit node uh, entirely. In which case, you only serve as the guard and relay positions uh, in 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 this diagram. So you won't be eg exiting any traffic at all. That that'll that'll should eliminate entirely. Um, what I also do is I put a little. I uh, make sure that my Tor IP res resolves to something like Tor exit. Uh, as, the, as the first part of the domain name. And so it's clear when this thing shows up in the logs, it's like Tor exit or whatever. And then presumably somebody will be like, well, Tor, what's Tor exit? Either Google it or try and visit that, that uh, page uh, you know, of, of, that, of that domain, which, at, at which point I have you know, some kind of disclaimer. So that says, well, okay, well, this is a Tor node. It's used for censorship resistance. You know, we can't really, well, there's no way for us to really uh, differentiate the, the bad guys from the good guys. Um, and you know that sort of standard uh, description. Yeah. Uh, not in the U.S. We uh, we haven't even had any uh, node seizures in the U.S. But in Germany, there have been, I believe, two instances of. of of widespread crackdown, like a lot of the exit nodes in Germany were seized at one point. Um, I don't think any legal action was ever brought against those uh, those uh, node runners. Um, there were a couple of people who had some somewhat nasty uh, encounters where you know their, their their computers were taken for like a day or two and then uh, presumably in inspected and then returned. I don't think anybody has has actually been. Uh, I, we, I have not actually looked into that. I don't, I don't think that, I don't I mean, not, none of them that we've seen. <laughs> I mean, it's quite possible that, that, that that could happen, but haven't really, haven't really, uh, have any definitive proof. There is, as I said, there is, the, there are load balancing issues that, that are kind of making things a little bit hazy to, to see exactly what's going on at this point. So, as far as, as far as, uh, traffic capacity. Yeah. Um, I actually have not used the Tor validation page. Is there? I mean, some some Tor so some Tor nodes do not list their actual exit IP in the. Uh, directory, like they'll exit out of some other IP, either due to misconfiguration or you know some kind of uh, NAT uh, upstream, so that you'll connect to it for, from one IP and then it'll exit via another. That's a possibility, but I don't know why it would happen every time. I would su suspect some kind of of configuration issue. Are, are they actually have you? Uh, does, is it ever your IP? I mean, have you tried going to like what's my IP dot com or whatever, just to see, make sure that? Huh. Some, yeah, some of them not validating. I would suspect that would be because of uh, those those nodes that do not advertise their actual exit IP. Do we have a count on how many those are, there are of those? I think Coder Man was there looking are at that. Few, they're fast. Mm. So it, it does happen. Uh, we've been working on a script that actually does active testing and says, okay, well, what is your IP then? 
and that way we can make a better answer. We have not, we're not actively stopping it. Most, the default exit policy blocks uh, the common P2P ports. Um, it is definitely discouraged because of the load it puts on the network. Um, and so far, the, I, we did have a, an issue with it where Canadian what ha, was, the, was this target of a DMCA uh, complaint, which was kind of strange. I don't think there have been any, very many other uh, extreme DMCA complaints. It is, it is the, the case that nodes that allow a lot of, you know, have a very, very liberal exit policy, um, do exhibit very loaded characteristics, like they're, they have high circuit failure, uh, high, a very low stream capacity. So it, it's possible that we, that just the exit policy, default exit policy is enough to stop most of the P2P traffic and the rest of it, the majority of it is just killing these, these few, these few nodes. But. Yeah. Thank you. Right. All right.